we shall discuss in this class about how pregnancy is maintained and also we'll discuss about what are the embryonic membranes extra embryonic membranes that surround the fetus or the developing embryo uh, so this is a uh, uh, this is the uh, picture or the diagrammatic representation and it shows the fetus uh, developing embryo inside the uh, amniotic fluid and it is surrounded by embryonic membranes also uh, so we'll discuss one by one and all these membranes uh, embryonic membranes uh, they protect uh, the fetus they give them uh, give the fetus protection all these membranes uh, give protection to the developing fetus so we'll discuss one by one what are these membranes and the first one is the amnion amnion is the innermost membrane and it is double layered and translucent also amnion is it is double layered and it is translucent and it is the innermost membrane and it encloses a fluid which is called as amniotic fluid this amniotic fluid it provides a comfortable medium for the fetus so that it can move inside the amniotic fluid embryo or the fetus can move inside the amniotic fluid well uh, the, this is about uh, this amnion and uh, the other one it is called as yolk sac this yolk sac it forms the gut yolk sac forms the gut and also it is the source of earliest blood cells and blood capillaries of the fetus okay so this is about yolk sac and we'll discuss now what is allantois and allantois it is the uh, out pocketing allantois is the out pocketing or it's a projection uh, from the embryonic tissue and uh, it is present at the caudal end of the yolk sac allantois is the uh, out pocketing of the embryonic tissue and it is present at the caudal end of the yolk sac and also it is the structural base of umbilical cord allantois forms the structural base of umbilical cord and also uh, it links the embryo to placenta and also this allantois it links the uh, embryo to the placenta and what happens is ultimately this allantois it becomes the part of the urinary bladder so this is the allantois and it is the out pocketing of embryonic tissue that's a projection from the embryonic tissue and it is present at the caudal end of yolk sac and it also forms the structural base of umbilical cord and also it links embryo to placenta and ultimately or finally allantois it becomes the part of the uh, embryo's urinary bladder okay so we'll discuss now what is chorion and chorion it is the outermost uh, layer chorion is the outermost layer and it encloses all the other embryonic membranes and also the fetus inside and also this uh, chorion it helps to helps in the formation of placenta so the tropoblast cells which are present in the blastocyst blastocyst that is this is what we discussed earlier blastocyst consists of outermost uh, layer of cells called tropoblast so these tropoblast cells of the blastocyst they send out several finger like projections from the chorion finger like projections uh, come out or sprout and uh, it is from it is actually the origin of these uh, finger like projections are from tropoblast cells of the blastocyst so these uh, projections are these embryonic villi they carry the fetal blood they carry the fetal blood to the surrounding uh, sinuses or the places or the uh, blood filled mother's maternal blood filled uh, cavities called sinuses so the chorion is the outermost membrane and uh, it is the uh, it projects out to form embryonic villi that is uh, chorionic villi and this chorionic villi they originate from the tropoblast cells of the blastocyst and these finger like projections of the chorion carry the fetal blood and fetal blood to the surrounding uh, that is spaces which are filled with maternal blood so that it is easy for the exchange of uh, gases and also nutrients between the mother's blood or maternal blood with the fetal blood so this is all about uh, the extra embryonic membranes we'll discuss uh, uh, now about other uh, information so this is with the diagram what i have explained is the extra embryonic membranes which are uh, amnion yolk sac allantois and chorion so their general function is protection 
protecting the embryo from desiccation, mechanical shock, and also they help in the absorption of nutrients and exchange of gases. So amnion is the innermost layer. It is double layer, and it is uh, inside. It has a fluid which is called amniotic fluid, and the and that is function of the amniotic fluid is to provide a buoyant environment so that it protects the uh, it can protect the emb um, embryo or the developing embryo from injury regulates also the temperature of the fetus and also it provides a medium in which the fetus can move and yolk sac is the other membrane and it forms the part of the gut and also it is the source of earliest blood cells and blood vessels so this is also another diagrammatic representation and it shows the uh, this chorionic villi and uh, the, these are the other uh, extra embryonic membranes which arise from the chorion which is the outermost membrane and this is the uh, yolk sac okay later on yolk sac uh, it is pinched off uh, pinched off and it forms definite yolk sac and i think these uh, informations are not given in the book and this is the extra embryonic serum so this is also uh, uh, the picture uh, to show the embryo with the umbilical cord and uh, the membranes of the embryo so the allantois is the next membrane and it forms a small out pocketing of embryonic tissue and it is present at the caudal end of the yolk sac and it's the structural base for the umbilical cord and it also links the embryo to the placenta and finally it becomes part of the urinary bladder of the fetus so chorion is the outermost membrane that encloses embryo and all the other membranes it also helps in the formation of placenta the tropoblast cells in the blastocyst uh, sprout out or send out several finger like projections called chorionic villi these villi carry fetal blood and are surrounded by sinuses sinuses are the blood filled that is maternal blood filled spaces so that exchange of gases and nutri nutrients from the mother's blood can be taken place so the chorionic villi and the uterine tissues form disc shaped placenta actually it is the chorionic villi and the uterine tissues which form the uh, mother's uh, placenta or maternal placenta okay so the chorionic villi and the uterine tissues which form the maternal placenta and the chorionic villi uh, it form uh, they form the fetal placenta so both together form disc shaped placenta placenta is a temporary endocrine gla gland it acts as an endocrine gland and it is formed during pregnancy and it connects the fetus to the uterine wall through the umbilical cord so it's an important structure and placenta it connects the fetus to the uterine wall through the umbilical cord and it is also the organ by which the nutritive respiratory and the excretory functions are fulfilled so these are the basic uh, functions which have to be carried out for the survival of the fetus so the nutrients from the mother's blood has to be transported to the fetal blood circulation likewise uh, oxygen to be taken into the fetal blood and carbon dioxide must be collected back so that it can go through maternal blood likewise excretory products or the waste also have to be removed so they are taken away to maternal blood so this is a uh, placenta it's an important organ that serves to uh, do all these functions primary functions nutritive respiratory and excretory functions the embryo's heart develops during the fourth week of pregnancy and circulates blood through the umbilical cord and placenta as well as through its own tissues so the heart of the embryo it is formed during the fourth week of pregnancy and uh, it circulates blood fetal heart it circulates blood through the umbilical cord so through umbilical cord only the fetal blood is taken uh, uh, through this uh, through this and placenta as well as through its own tissues fetal blood is circulated through umbilical cord placenta and as well as through its own tissues uh, so we'll uh, we'll discuss now about uh, what are the germ layers that is the primary germ layers which are ectoderm mesoderm endoderm how they uh, serve as the primitive tissues so that organs all body organs develop from these layers the ectoderm it gives rise to the central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord the ectoderm gives rise to central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord this is what we have learned that is in the blastocyst the outermost layer of cells are called 
uh, tropoblast and inside uh, there are around 100 more more than 100 cells which form inner mass so this inner mass of cells they become hypoblast and epiblast and epiblast uh, it becomes ectoderm and hypoblast uh, forms endoderm so the cells in between these uh, epiblast and hypoblast it they form mesoderm so now from ectoderm central nervous system that is organs like brain and spinal cord develop and peripheral nervous system epidermis and its derivatives and ma and mammary glands not only the central nervous system even peripheral nervous system epidermis and its derivatives and mammary glands so all these organs are derived from ectoderm and connective tissue cartilage and bone muscles organs of urinogenital system that is kidney ureter and gonads they arise from mesoderm so from mesoderm these are formed so these are the derivatives of mesoderm and uh, central nervous system peripheral nervous system and all these are the derivatives from uh, ectoderm and endodermal derivatives are epithelium of gastrointestinal and respiratory tract liver pancreas thyroid and parathyroid okay with that uh, the other information we'll discuss in the next class thank you